Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. Today, midday upload, we are talking about trading with ones to watch cards. These are some of the most exciting and just nerve wracking at the same time cards to trade with on this game because they're all based around in real life performances when these players do play in real life. It's so fun, right? Wants to watch trading. It's one of the most fun ways you can trade in this game. It's risky, but it's fun. These cards fluctuate a lot, especially when they're hyped. And right now, they are brand new to the game, so they are very hyped. There's a lot of eyes on these cards. There's a lot of games coming up as well that we can watch and possibly make coins and buy these cards on a low, sell them on a trend fluctuation high. And there's kind of weekly trends that you can do and, and make coins with these cards where you can actually kind of passively trade with them every single week. And I think that's going to work really good this year with the hype cards and the big names and the performances that some of these players are putting in already, even, even though they've been only at these clubs for a, a small amount of time with the seasons just starting about a month ago and more competitions on the horizon as well, like Champions League, Europa League, a lot of the cup games. Again, the biggest thing to remember with these ones to watch cards is they're only upgraded from performance-based Informs, man of the matches, or other items like team of the tournaments. There's a whole list, I think, on the EA website, but it's basically informs, man of the matches, and like team of the group stage cards. Anything that is a performance based card, they will rise. So if a card gets a scream item, like if Odegaard gets a scream, his ones to watch is not going to get upgraded. So again, it all is just based around in game performance. So of course, we have both sets of ones to watch uh, cards that are out in, in the game right now. We have team one. And we have team two. And I want to talk about a little bit of a difference between these two teams. And also because one is in packs right now. That's why there's a difference. But also talk about how you can trade with these cards on a weekly. And how there's so many different market movements that you can do with these cards. Whether you're just kind of trading with them weekly. Or if you're trading with them on the spot during a game. We're going to talk all about it. So we have a lot of great examples to go over this week. Because we have cards that scored goals. That are possibly getting informs. Cards that scored goals that, you know, didn't have as good of a performance to get an inform. And then also cards that didn't do anything, players that didn't play and their cards going down after a game because of that. So let's look at our first example. And it is Luis Suarez already receiving one inform this year. Luis Suarez has been banging in goals wherever he's been playing. National Team Uruguay, Atletico Madrid. This guy's been playing goals. So what happened today was Luis Suarez before the game, and we can even go back to Friday and look, he was 130. 736k basically 136k early in the day on friday right the day before a game suarez is 134 promo friday after we have the promo friday he starts to rise up 147 we get to the morning he's 150 right before game time he's 150,000 coins right what happens in the early parts of the game luis suarez scores a goal in the sixth minute of his game uh today it is right here atletico madrid versus celta vigo this is going to, dude, uh, Sofa score is pretty low on the website, slow on the website right now. I don't know why, but Luis Suarez scored, right? So I actually, on my transfer list, I had a Luis Suarez. I literally woke up at the perfect time because this is like midday for you guys in the UK. But for me, this is like early morning. So I woke up, Suarez, boom, he had scored his goal like five minutes before, uh, before I woke up. So I was like, oh shoot, I got to sell this card right away. Listed my Suarez at 160, got him out. Suarez is now back down, as we saw in Footbin, back down to 123. So again, analyzing this graph, right? Suarez, 123 right now. He was at 160. You sell after that first goal. And what happens is a card like this is going to rise up because people are going to buy it. Because like, oh, he's going to get an inform, right? He's having good performance. He's going to go higher. So the card goes up after that initial goal. And then what happens is if there's no goal for a little bit of while after that, the card starts to, you know, kind of slowly go back down because people are like, all right, well, I, I have this card. I invested in him. I don't know if he's going to score again. So I'm just selling it. And there's a little bit of undercutting that happens. He kind of starts to creep down. Now, if he scores a second goal, kind of like what Timo Werner did today, he shoots back up, right? Because now with that second goal, they usually shoot higher with that second one. Let's look at Timo Werner's graph. It might be really hard to see on the daily graph. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but what happened likely here with Timo Werner was he was 700,000 coins. He scored the first goal. He went up a bunch and then he, he went down probably a little bit in between unless those goals were very close. I think the Timo goals were a bit spread apart. Um, team, okay, not much. Timo scored in the 15th and 28th. So there wasn't a lot of time for that car to go down. But honestly, what happened was he probably just shot right back up after that second goal. And then he kind of dropped back off after the game. This is a very, very common thing that happens. So again, right, 
You buy a player before the game, the player goes up, they score a goal, boom, you make your profit and you're in, right? That's number one way and the easy and the most you just like stress-free way and the perfect scenario for trading with the ones to watch, right? Here's the second thing that happens. Let's say you didn't buy before the game or you bought the card when it was rising up and it goes high for like an, you know, an hour or so after people like there's all the hype there. You know, Chelsea was ahead in this game. They were ahead three to two. They were ahead two, two to oh, actually. And they ended up drawing. But Timo Werner was basically man of the match, right? Highest rating. So Timo Werner is probably going to get an inform this. It's very possible. Two goals, one assist. He doesn't have any special cards yet this year. It's possible he gets an inform this week. So what happens is everybody who bought those cards, they're like, why is this price not staying up, right? They want to take their coins. They're making coins. They start selling. People start undercutting 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 and undercutting so timo was 725k playstation before the game he went to 860 and then after the game you know two hours or so he's back down to sub 800 he literally dropped like 60 70 000 coins right and now look where he's at he's rising back up he was just 840 on the playstation i don't know what was up with that but he's kind of back up actually he's about 820k you can see there's a, a nice undercut right there on timo he's about 820k so we went from 720 to 860 back down to 780 740 on the xbox and now he's back up to 800k on both consoles xbox if you got in here at 740 that was a huge drop off but this is the second biggest thing right if a player has a really really good performance there's a really high chance and this happens almost every time if that player is going to get an inform there's an opportunity to actually buy after the game when there's panic selling and then you'll have another opportunity to reinvest in that card and then sell it as it rises up into the week Wow, Timo's at 790 right now. This is getting really interesting. Obviously, I don't have enough coins right now to look at this, but this is almost as low as he got earlier this week. And I still think Timo is in line for an inform. Now, I know the market's kind of crashing right now and the menus are laggy as always, as you can see here, but um, this card might be a little bit overvalued. So that's the only thing that I would can, you know, take a little bit of consideration with and be careful with. But in a normal market, what you see is, is you see this exactly thing right here. You see the big jump, the drop off after the game, another buy opportunity. And then as we head into Wednesday with team of the week, this guy's going to start getting a team week predictions. People are going to be like, all right, he's going to get an inform. He's going to get upgraded. That means this card's going to get upgraded. That means it's going to rise in value. Kind of like what happened with Thomas Partey last week, right? He's going to rise into Wednesday. He's going to get that inform. And then you're going to be able to sell in the hype just in case he doesn't get an inform for whatever reason. That's the safest way to do it for this amount of coins. It's kind of like one of the easiest ways those are like the two i guess ways to trade with ones to watch now of course that's if a player scores goals and has a good game let's talk about a player that maybe does not have a good game or you know doesn't even play right let's talk about ziech right this is another popular player on chelsea he was like a hundred thousand coins before the game today right around there he was actually 115 110 wasn't named in the starting lineup, so kind of dropped off before the game. And then, of course, as the game is going on, and he just drops off. He's not getting in the game, not playing, or just does not have a good performance, whatever it may be, for this item. He just drops off, drops off, drops off. And a lot of these cards, let's look at like, um, well, Teles played not super duper long ago, so the sell-off is probably still happening there. But for a lot of these cards, what happens post-game is, or for even like a Ziyech again, using him as an example, there's a lot of a sell-off after a game. And this is kind of where the weekly trend trading kind of comes into play, right? Ziyech was 115,000 coins before the game, right? He's dropped down to 80,000 coins. Now, there's some Champions League games that are coming up later this week. And yes, I know that Champions League games do not count for a lot of these cards upgrades, right? Because you're not getting informs on the weekly uh, or man of the match cards on a weekly basis for Champions League. But since it is a real life game, that people will get to watch Chelsea play. They'll get to watch Luis Suarez play. The reason why I bought more Suarez today when he's down here to 120,000 coins is because Suarez is playing well, right? Atletico Madrid, they play on Tuesday against Bayern Munich. They play on Tuesday against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Now, of course, I've heard some people saying, why would you buy the card then? Because he's not going to get upgraded from a good Champions League performance. That is true. But... People do not understand that. People don't get that. And there's a lot of people in this game that just think of ones to watches. They get upgraded when they have a good game. So if Suarez scores a goal on Tuesday, go back to this graph and watch Suarez go up because he will go up on Tuesday if he scores a goal against uh, uh, against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, even though he's not going to get a special card for that, unless he is doing something different this year. 
which they very well could. And then this would be another a same way to trade. But they don't historically get Team of the Week cards for Champions League performances. And they're not doing Man of the Matches right now. So this card is still going to go up if he scores. He's probably going to rise into game time as well. It's not going to be a huge rise. But some people just don't understand that stuff. They don't realize that these cards get upgraded only in certain ways. And this card will rise, right? Timo Werner, uh, they play, of course, Champions League this week as well. So just kind of keep an eye on some of these cards, right? Some of these guys that have Champions League, if they're not injured, right? Just be careful with injured players. Um, you know, even if they're playing Europa League, like Spurs are playing Europa League on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, you know, Bale, let's say Bale uh, today on Sunday, right? This is a very, very hyped up card right now. This is a card that you would want to sell in the hype, in my opinion, right? Bale's been injured. He's not a guarantee to start. He's not even a guarantee to play. He's probably going to be on the bench and people are going to have a lot of eyes on him. There's going to be a lot of hype. Does he get in? Maybe. Does he have an impact? Who knows? But a very smart thing to do here. If you bought this card, like anywhere between 250 and 280, because that's where this guy has been. I would sell this in the hype. He is really rising up into game time. Yes, he has a lot of hype, but the safe way to do it is to sell in the hype with a lot of these cards pre-game. And that's one of the most important things as well. Like we talked about with the Suarez, we, we saw that he was kind of rising in game, right? You could have bought him Friday for 134 and sold him for 150, like right before the game. Uh, and you wouldn't even have to worry about his performance. And you were making not quite 10K a card there. What is that's almost that's like 8,000 coins a card. If you would have done that, that's a decent trend daily, like flipping in or not 10 weekly investment that you can make with these cards that you can do almost every week, right? You can literally just sit here since Bale is very hyped up. Let's say nothing happens to Bale today on Sunday, right? He doesn't get in or he plays 10 minutes and doesn't record a goal and assist or anything like that. He's probably going to drop off back to, you know, 270, maybe 250 again after the game. But what's going to happen? Spurs are going to have a couple games coming up in this next week or so. Of course, they've got Premier League games next weekend. They've got Europa League matches midweek. This guy's probably going to rise back up in price again because there's hype because they're playing. People just like to make that connection between IRL and ones to watch cards. A card in FIFA. The, the, it, this is like the FIFA to IRL connection and people love it, dude. They freaking love these cards. So that's kind of like the major ways that I like to trade with a lot of these cards. Now, of course, Big time decisions with VAR affects these cards as well. Timo Werner today is a perfect example, right? This Werner card was rising up because he scored that first goal. People saw the goal notification. They saw that he scored. The card started to rise. It went to VAR and there was panic listing, right? Because people were like, oh no, this went to VAR. He might not score. So the price like dipped right down for a really short amount of time. I'm pretty sure this is what happened today. And then he rose back up when the goal was scored or whatever, or the goal counted. So... If there's ever offside goals, right? Be very, very careful. This is why it's risky trying to trade with these cards and try to buy them when you get a goal notification because then you some people try to buy the card right away, sell it like 10, 15 minutes later after everybody else goes and buys it and try to time that perfectly. But you have to be very, very careful with VAR and with offside calls. And especially like know if you're watching a stream that your stream might not be like right on time. So when you're going to buy the card, it might already be inflated. So just be kind of careful with that. The biggest advice I can give you is this website right here, sofascore.com. Find yourself an app that keeps score. This SofaScore app, I've got it on my phone. I use it all the time. I've got notifications set up on my phone right here so that when guys like Timo Werner score, guys like Suarez, basically what I do is I go through this entire once to watch team and I turn notifications on for each and every player because if they score, I can, and if I'm not on my console, I can quick flip up the companion app and possibly buy a couple cards, uh, especially if it's a really high player, watch them rise 10, 15 minutes later, sell that card, make a few coins that way. That's a way you can kind of be risky with it, but also get gold notifications. So SofaScore is the name of this website right here. There's a couple other ones out there. Just make sure that if you're getting an app or downloading an app and getting notifications, that they are very, very fast, right? They're very fast, very detailed. And, um, you know, check Twitter too, right? Because people are tweeting all the time. So like, let's say you get a notification that Werner scored a goal and you go and buy two Verners and then you go to Twitter and you're swiping on Twitter. You're like, you're like, oh, VAR, that's not a goal. Then you're like, oh crap, dude, I got to go back and sell my Werner cards before he drops down even more or, you know, something like that. So stay tuned to Twitter and get gold notifications. That's the biggest, if you're going to trade quickly with these, like during a, a Saturday or Sunday game, 
that's the biggest advice I can give to you. And again, these cards, they're so fun to trade with. And especially this year, it looks like we've got a really nice set of a couple teams here with ones to watch set one. We have a lot of strikers, attackers, a lot of midfielders. Honestly, when I look at these two squads, we've got a lot of midfielders like center mids like Tiago, Arthur, you know, Vidal, but we also have a lot of strikers too, right? Uh, Rodrigo, David, you know, you've got other attacking players like Ferran Torres and then in team one, I think this is the most prolific team. Werner, Suarez, Bale, um, you know, uh, Hakimi actually scores a decent amount of goals. If Ziyech gets in, that could be pretty interesting too. So these cards are going to be really fun to trade with year round. They're going to be very profitable week in, week out, and they're going to get forgotten about as we head on throughout the year. They're going to get forgotten about, but they're always pretty consistent ways to make coins because they're fluctuating we weekly. They're selling and getting low after games. If they don't have a good performance. And then of course you can know like, Hey, if they have another game coming up soon, or you can kind of watch these cards on the promo Friday, promo Fridays, there's a lot of panic selling. Sometimes you see a once to watch card getting sold the next day, you know, they've got a league game. Maybe you have a chance to pick up that card at a deal. And then, to, and then obviously the hype returns for the next day as it wants to watch card would rise up for the game and the potential to score. So that's kind of ways that you can trade these cards. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. A lot of information about wants to watch is they're risky, they're fun, but this is like a gambling aspect of even how trading is kind of gambling in some sorts. It's just like you're betting on a real life performance for one of these players for their price to rise and for you to make coins inside of a video game. So it's really interesting, really cool kind of confusing sometimes and it's a big potential to lose but also a big potential game it's like high stakes right high stakes trading very volatile but very very fun and uh enjoyable when you get it right so if you enjoyed this video and this helped you at all smash the thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel for new it's been nate the foot accountant catch you guys later peace